Welcome everybody. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, it's watercolors and I'm going to be using the Artistro lovely watercolor set that I received from them. And um, before we get started, we are going to do um, a little bit of sketching. And I actually have a Cricut machine which cuts out the shapes on watercolor paper. So this is something that um, I like to do during the holidays. So what I'm gonna first do is just lightly sketch where I want my stems to go. Uh, let's see. And all of these pumpkins are at somewhat of a different angle. So then there's this one here. And as you can see, I'm just putting a soft little scalloped edge and then from there, I can pretty much lightly sketch where my little lines are going to go. So as you can see, I'm just giving a light sketch, something like this, just so I kind of know that on the outer parts of the rind, I wanna have some shine mark, and you'll see what I mean. So let's go ahead and do the rest of these. I'm not gonna do anything on the leaf. So um, yeah, so as you can see, I'm just going to, so these little scallop edges really help as far as knowing where to put um, the, uh, the next line. And as you know, all pumpkins, um, they're different. So we don't have to worry so much about it being, you know, oh, perfect. Kind of like a cloud uh, effect. You know, you there's no such thing as a cloud looking a certain way. They all look a little different. So same thing with a pumpkin. They can all be a little bit different from each other. Okay, so now I've got my sketch down. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is put all the light parts down first. So um, I'm going to work with um, a yellow ochre color. And I want to work with a very, very light color. So I'm adding quite a bit of water to this. And all I'm going to do is right here in the middle of each part of the rind, I'm going to just put a simple stroke like this. This, These are the highlights of the pumpkin, but that cannot be applied on top of dark rich colors. That's why we have to do this first. I am working with a number six silver black velvet and um, these, I just love these paint brushes. I know that everybody, all uh, watercolor artists have their favorites, but these are my favorites right here. So this is what I just kind of go to. Um, I got this lovely set of um, 48 colors from Artistro, and um, so I'm, I'm going to use these for the lesson. And then I'll talk to you about how you can get your own set. So you can see right now, see what I'm doing? I'm just adding a very light, and once this dries, it's going to even be lighter. Let's just bring that down a little bit. And the leaf is interesting. I, what I, I wanna have some lighter shades on my leaf. So I'm gonna just kind of dab that. And I also would like part of my stem to be uh, lighter than the rest, not darker. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand paint that in. Take this out in the sun and let it dry. If you don't have sun, then just um, use a blow dryer or just let it air dry. It may take a while. So you can see I put a couple of little uh, yellow splotches on it just because leaves tend to have lots of different shades kind of going in and out. So, okay, so I'm gonna stop here, let these dry, and then we're gonna come back and do some fun stuff. Okay, I'm back and um, in order to get my uh, pumpkins to have really rich uh, coloring, we definitely have to do this in layers. So the next color I would like to do is a lighter tone 
of a really pretty pumpkin color. And I think this will be good. Now, the key is I have to be super careful what areas I don't want to hit in here. So what I'm going to do is cover this entire pumpkin with this orange color, but keeping in mind that, and I'll show you right here, when I get to the part where I want it to be, you know, little shine marks on the pumpkin, I have to go around it. Um, I am using 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. So you see what I've done here? I've left that part. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. I kind of like a little bit of a jagged uh, effect when I do it. I don't like it to be, and I'll even kind of, you know, cut it in, in half. But now I'm gonna fill the rest of this with this color, being mindful to um, leave that area in there. I always love the fall. I love uh, pumpkin season. I love all things pumpkin. And I think it's because orange is such a warm uh, color. Okay, so again, I've got this little shine mark. I wanna make sure that I don't, I don't cover that with this color. So you can see, I'm just filling that in. Okay, and I've got another one here. We just want to make sure we just stay away from that. All right. See what I'm saying? I've left that. It almost looks like it's white because it's so light, but it is not. It's a very, very light um, yellow ochre color. And we'll go ahead and leave this one here. And this is the last of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of them. And just like I did this one, you don't need to see me do all of them like that. And we're gonna do it in um, time-lapse just to save time. But um, I always like, to, whenever I do my cards, I always like to do a whole lot at, at one time. Um, it just saves having to go through the process. So, um, all right, I'm gonna do that to the rest of mine and even to my leaf. Okay, so my little pieces are dry, and I am gonna put, of course, more detail on them, but sometimes while I'm letting them dry, I'll work on the backgrounds, because each one is gonna get glued down to one of my watercolor backgrounds, and then it gets put onto an actual card. It just makes it everything easier when I do it in uh, different levels. So, a lot of times, what I may do is, let's see, this one is really cute, and it's really small. The other ones really fill up the card which is fine, this one will go up and down like this. But I don't wanna leave the background like this. So I'm gonna get these out of the way because I don't wanna get anything on them. But a quick and easy background that you can do is, let's see, let's just go with a really nice, rich mustard yellow ochre color. Every, every paint set has different names, that's why um, I hate to give you uh, the exact name in case your set doesn't, but if you do buy one of these Artistro sets, you'll get 48 colors to choose from, which as you can see, there's a lot of them I haven't even used yet, and then you see the ones that I use the most. So um, this is an easy thing to do. You're just watering down this color, and all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna try to just stick with the outside, but of course I have no control, but you're just holding the brush like this, and you're tapping down like this, and this makes for a really nice background make sure it's watery enough so that it will definitely splatter and it doesn't really matter how big the splatters are most of it gets covered up anyway but i just don't want to have it on a white background and i will probably do several colors too so i'm going to switch over and i think i will do a i'm just going to switch over to um Let's go with a burgundy color. So I'm gonna go with this wine color here. That's really pretty. And I'm gonna mix it 
Actually, this one is more wine. Yeah, that's pretty. I think that um, what you choose is up to you. Um, I want it more rusty though. So I think I'm gonna, what is this one here? I just got this set and I've just been having so much fun. Yeah, that's a little bit more red. So, in, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add a little bit of green to this and that's gonna tone it down so it's not so bright. I don't really want it bright. There we go, that's what I wanted. So add a little green to your red and it'll make it much more of a burgundy brown color because it neutralizes it. So now I'm gonna hit that. It's exactly what I wanted. Just something a little bit richer and darker. And I have this, um, this is like a plastic coat here on, on the bottom here. So that makes it nice to, when I'm done, I can just wipe it. There. And that's a good place to stop. Um, I'm gonna wipe this while I have while it's wet, and then I'll show you another um, thing I like to do use as a background. All right, so here's another idea for a background. Um, as you can see, I taped it down because I'm gonna wet the whole thing, and a lot of times it'll buckle up and curl, and we don't really want that while we're doing this. And it'll also give it a nice little white border. So what I'm gonna do first is just wet it, and that, the entire thing. And this is probably out of all of them, the simplest one. So again, I think I'm just gonna take a lot of these really pretty fall colors. And all we're doing is dabbing it in a few places. Don't use a lot of thought into this, okay? because then you kind of take the fun out of what's happening. So you just want to have fun with this part here. And what's going to happen because they are, you know, it, everything is wet, it tends to just bleed in a, such a fun way. And it's always unexpected how it's going to come out. So as you can see, I'm just sort of randomly putting it, maybe it will kind of look like leaves in the background falling down or just with sunlight coming through. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. We're gonna let it dry and, um, and that will be the background on another one of our cards. Okay, the last idea for the background of our cards is going to be a night sky. And um, this one is really easy, super fun. And what you're gonna do is just pick, let's go with this, let's see what this is. Yeah, this is really, I, I'm looking for more of a navy blue color. I don't even care if it mixes in with a little of this red, it'll give it a nice dark sky. But I'm gonna need a lot of it, okay? So I'm putting down quite a bit of it. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of this brown color. It's kind of a burnt umber. And what that, see what that does? It makes it more of a gray. So I wanna cover the whole sky with that. And it looks like I'm gonna need, definitely need some more because there we go. So to me, that looked like an ultramarine blue and this is uh, just kind of a nice rich chocolate brown color. Um, probably burnt umber. I don't have the color chart right here in front of me, but again, I don't want you to get so hooked on what color I'm using. I want you to learn to use your imagination. And let's do a little bit more, make it a little darker. There we go. Sometimes you just have to lay it down to see what is actually happening here. And this is just more of an evening, kind of overcast sky. So you can see it's like, ooh. And this is gonna be a pumpkin that's just sort of minding its own business out at night with, um, and we're gonna put a ground now. And I think I'll just use, just to, just to make it easy on myself, I'm gonna use the same burnt umber color and I'm gonna run it along the bottom. 
and let that blend right into the other color, okay? Now there's more we're gonna do to this, but we're just gonna let this dry for right now and then um, you'll see what, how, how it's magical when we get done. Okay, after this dries, um, and it's very dry now, I like to use the Artistro painting, or these paint marker pens. These are fabulous. This is a medium point, and you know, after you've shaken it really good and you see that it's coming out, this is just a nice brown color. I'm gonna go ahead and let it run across the edge right there. And it's coming on pretty straight because I'm leaning on the edge of it. So you can make this as thick or as narrow as you like, but this is my frame. So I'll go ahead and turn it and continue to do all the way around. And when it gets on the card, it's gonna look really fun. And these paints generally dry pretty quick. So I would just take this outside, let it dry really well. Let's see, I think it needs to be a little bit thicker on this side. There. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry really well. And as you can see, I sort of flip-flop from project to project, but like I said, when I make cards, I like to do a lot of them at the same time. So I'm gonna let this dry and come back and work on my pumpkins. All right, so let's work on our pumpkins right now and our leaf. So I have um, nice and dry. It's got, they've even gotten a little bit stiffer, which makes it easier to work with. So we'll just work on this one here and then I'll do time lapse with the other ones. But what I'm trying to accomplish here now is just a richer pumpkin color. So play with the colors that you have in your set. Right now I'm going for these two dark orange colors in here that are at the bottom. And it's probably cad orange. And as you can see, it's just kind of rich and deep in tone. So I'm gonna go ahead ooh, and get started here. I love doing this stuff. So I can still, by the way, I can still see my pencil lines, which is good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and come along the outer part and right where the creases go in. And I always like to keep a wet brush on hand so that I can kind of let that bleed. I'm just gonna wet it so it will bleed right into the color that's there. I've left a little of the original color that's there, but still keeping my white. Just trying to get into a richer tone. And I don't like to spend a whole lot of time on stuff like this just because, um, you know, it is a card. Um, I don't think people throw them away, but at the same time, I'm just trying to get this done so that I can get them off in the mail too. So again, wet brush, just a plain wet brush, and I'm just gonna hit it along the edges so it will bleed right into the color that it's next to. All right, and um, and as you can see, I don't work with little teeny tiny brushes, and the reason is, is they always have these really fine points on them, which I love. So if I wanna do the fine work, it's, it's, it's available to me. So I'll just go ahead and finish doing this. And what I like to do is along the bottom, I'm gonna take this um, burgundy color in here and mix it in my orange. So now I've got kind of a, a burgundy orange tone. It's very rich. And I'm gonna hit it along the bottom while it's wet. And again, wet paintbrush, blend it in. Just wet it on the edges just so it blends in a little bit better. And I'm also gonna use this color to come alongside on the inside where those um, creases are. Keeping in mind, remember it's a pumpkin and there's no such thing as this perfect pumpkin. So once I've got that and I'm gonna go ahead and wet my brush 
and just sort of swipe it there just so it's not I don't want sharp lines I just want to have it be deeper in the crevices there okay maybe along the bottom a little bit more and along the outer edge here I'm leaving one side dark and one side light as you can see this is darker this is lighter because the sun is hitting or the light is hitting in that direction there so I'm going to go ahead and do time lapse on the other ones. Um, and then we'll work on the stems and get those done. Okay. So as you can see, I'm just taking the same colors that I used in my pumpkin and I am just giving it downward strokes using the point first to really get it in there and then downward strokes just like that. And that is all I am doing with the leaf. Again, it's a painting. I'm not trying to make it look like a, you know, a photograph of a leaf. I'm just having fun and then I'm going to take this really pretty dark burgundy color and just put it right in there with the orange and hit it along the tips of some of it. There's no super right or super wrong way of doing this. I'm just sort of there. And then I'll come along later well, I guess I'll just go ahead and do it now. Then I'll take the burnt umber and go ahead and do the stem and just run it along the side of some of the veins. There. And that's how I'll do my leaf. Okay, so we're gonna just stop there and go ahead and do the stems of my pumpkins. So let's go ahead and special out. And I'm gonna go ahead and just take the, looks like a sap green. A lot of times I just use what's on my palette. And so I'm just mixing it right here with this brown and this red and now it's just getting to be a very you know, uh, neutral color. But for, for right now, I just want to block in the stem, and then I'll come along and do some details in a second, as soon as as soon as it dries. So, let's go ahead and do all three of them. And you'll see. Um, you could use paint pens and I will probably demonstrate with a paint pen too. A lot of times when we're doing detailed work, paint pens are just easier to use because it's like, you know, holding a pen instead of holding a paintbrush and doing fine work. And that does take, you know, years of practice to get to where you have control over that. But I want you to have fun today with just using your paint brushes. So as you can see, I blocked those in, but there's no detail to it yet. So we're gonna, we will get to that. So I'm gonna, let these dry really well before I venture off and do any more. Okay, so remember our piece with, that we did with the night sky and the brown that we came here. We're just gonna finish this off and to make it a little easier, um, I'm gonna demonstrate with paint pens and these Artistro paint pens are amazing, absolutely amazing. So I'll start with the white. You always wanna shake it really, really good first. I kind of shake it for about 30 seconds till I hear the little bead in there and then um, press down on the side, make sure it's actually coming out. And this is super simple. We're just gonna, you know, dot it to represent some stars in the sky some I will do a little bit bigger than others, just to make it more interesting. 
pumpkin's going to go here. And basically, the pumpkin takes up a lot of the room on there. So um, keeping in mind, I don't really need to do anything in the middle. But if you want to make sure that it's that the background is evenly captured behind it, then you can just come in a little bit. But I know that there's a pumpkin going here, so I'm not even going to bother. So we're going to go ahead and just um, finish that up. Do you see how quick that was? And I didn't have to deal with a paintbrush doing these tiny little dots. And then the ground cover, I found this um, beige color or cream color. So I'm going to go ahead and just... It's going on light, but it dries a little darker and just make this look like kind of a hay effect. I'm gonna do two colors and just criss crisscross, crisscross, that's it. Keeping it very neutral, very sweet. If you want to do another color, you can. I'm just going to keep this very simple just to get on with it. And um, so as you can see, that is our finished background. And so when I go to lay the finished pumpkin down on top, it's going to be very sweet. It also has a really nice little white border because um, I ended up you know, taping that. So that's the benefit of taping it is you do get the white border. But you can also always, just like I did with the other one, lay it down and put a border on it with paint pens. So that's the choice that you have for your backgrounds. Let's go ahead and finish up our cards now. Okay, so I'm back with my very dry pumpkins and my leaf and we're just gonna do a little bit of fine tuning and then call it done. Like I said, I don't like to put a whole lot of whole lot of time into it. I'm just using the sap green. I'm mixing it right into my mixture in here, which has got lots of oranges, reds, and browns. And so now I'm just going to work on the stem to finish that up. And usually there's lots of little lines. I'm going to go ahead and make it look like it's round on top since that's kind of thick. And then we have these lines that come across. First we'll establish these, the bottom part of our stem. And then I'm just going to run my paintbrush up to give it some lines. You have to always let these things dry or you can't do this detail. You could definitely do this with a paint pen if you want to. I don't like to make everything look so even either. Some of them are light and or thin and some of them are heavier. So but that's a good place to stop. Okay, so I'll do the other ones in the same way. These don't really take a whole lot of time because they're so small. So as you can see, I can do this quickly. Um, as far as the templates go on these, I may go ahead and sell a bunch of them on my website. Um, if you want to do, if you want to just draw it out yourself and cut it out, maybe you know somebody with a Cricut machine. All I did was type out um, pumpkins and up popped a lot of these shapes. So I decided, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. It's a lot easier and it makes it a little bit more 3D, which I like. So I'll just keep going here. And this just gives it a little bit more detail. It's not like they didn't look like stems before. You know, uh, some people like le less detail and some people like more. I kind of go back and forth with all of that. So um, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and dip it right into the mixture that I made that had the uh, red and orange mixed together. I just wanna give a tiny bit of detail right here inside of the groove, just to kind of wake that up a little. Sometimes it gets lost. 
And you know, I've said this so many times before in my other videos, but remember your colors are going to dry in a lighter shade. When you first put them down, don't, don't go, oh no, I didn't want it that dark because it's gonna dry lighter. Okay, I love these little pumpkins. I just think they're so sweet. And it just makes for just a very nice um, painting on a card. And like I said, most of the time, people don't throw them away. They keep them because they they know you spent the time painting it and they don't wanna throw it away. So you can see this one, the difference between this one and this one. You, I just kind of woke it up, but this one looks fine just the way it is. So if you don't wanna do that detail, you don't have to, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my pumpkins and then we'll glue them down. Okay, so this is the fun part, everybody. This is the, um, I actually added more color to this one because I thought it was a little too faded and I wanted it darker. Um, but here's our backgrounds that um, we painted. The one with the stars and the, and the evening sky, the splattered one. And this one is just, you know, blop, blop, blop. I'm just putting some paint down. So um, this is where the fun comes in. You, c I could take any one of these and intermix it with this uh these backgrounds and that's what um i like to do i'd like to do a bunch of backgrounds and then i decide um what card i'm going to put it on this is like a midnight blue and i've got this kind of vintagey pumpkin color one and then i've got a couple that are printed and they all came with envelopes the some of them came with colored envelopes and some of them have just white envelopes but the cool thing is is when you buy these sets from Hobby Lobby, you get a whole, you got, I think it's 40 cards with matching envelopes and you get a lot to choose from. So when they go on 50% off, you definitely wanna take advantage and get those. So anyway, now I'm going to decide what goes where. I have lots of, I you know, lots of options. So this is where I want you to have fun. Maybe I'll just glue this right on top of this one and just call it done. So, um, this one's really pretty because it has this very soft glitter. So I could just take the leaf and put it on that, or I could stick it right on here and then put it on and have a very soft border around it. I usually use tacky glue. I'll put a little puddle of it and take my finger and then just dab it on the back, hold it down, and it just takes minutes and it's, it's done. And the same thing with the card. Just put a little on the back, glue it down, and you might want to put something heavy on top just to kind of really get it down, you know, and get it nice and flat. But then you have a beautiful card, and everybody loves it. Don't forget to sign the bottom. That's really, really important. And um, anyway, well, we'll we'll be doing a lot of holiday cards. We're going to do um, a lot of really fun Christmas cards. So check back, check back often and um, get a little painting party going. Get your friends together and, you know, have some snacks on the side and some fun music and, you know, have everybody make cards. And it's just a great way to have fun and, you know, gather together and have community. So we're done for today. Um, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And we will paint soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.